today's closer look, the legacy of Columbine. Ever since that mayhem 15 years ago, we've seen more and more of these mass shootings, many by troubled young men inspired by the Columbine killers. In this brand new ABC News investigation, Pierre Thomas and his team dig into what drives these boys to unlock the mystery of why they snap and what can be done to stop them. Columbine High School, April 20th, 1999. Its deadly legacy still echoes today. Active shooter, Sparks Middle School, they have at least two down. October 21st, 2013, a Nevada boy, only 12, shoots and kills a teacher, wounds two students, then takes his own life. Police find pictures of the Columbine killers on the boy's cell phone. <laughs> April 9th, 2014, Franklin Regional High School near Pittsburgh. Chaos as a 16-year-old boy goes on a stabbing rampage, entering 22. On May 1st, police say they stopped a Minnesota boy, 17, from bombing and gunning down his classmate. Here he is testing his homemade explosives. All these cases share one common trait. All the suspects were inspired by or somehow tied to the Columbine tragedy when Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold hunted down and killed 12 students and a teacher in cold blood. ABC News identified 17 school attacks and 37 serious threats linked to Columbine since the massacre, among them the slaughters of Virginia Tech and Newtown. At least 10 of the cases came in the last year alone, as this disturbing phenomenon seems to be intensifying. In Pasadena, California, at the start of this school year, two students accused of planning another school massacre. They just wanted to kill as many people as possible. A three-month ABC News investigation spanning the country uncovered chilling evidence, video diaries, journals, police interrogations, where the Columbine killers often emerged. Here's that Minnesota suspect talking to police in May. My number one idol is Eric Harris. I think I just see myself in him. This 16-year-old Tampa student was also allegedly planning a murderous nightmare. I'm a Freedom High School shooter in Tampa, Florida. Well, I will be. Columbine, Virginia Tech, none of them will beat me. I'll kill them all. I can't wait to die, dude. Perhaps no case demonstrates the Columbine obsession more than the 2006 shooting spree of this sadistic North Carolina killer. He convinced a family member to drive him to Columbine. Columbine High School, right there. And you see over there? That's the library. That's where everything took place, right there. He bought the same guns. This, my friends, is what Eric Harris used in the Columbine massacre. He even dressed like them. Operation Columbine is underway. Tragically, it was more than just play acting. The suspect shot and killed his father, then opened fire at his high school, wounding two students. Remember Columbine! He was arrested in this t-shirt. Some of the killers and Columbine worshippers are mentally ill. Some want attention. Others feel slighted and have specific grievances that spiral out of control. And they're looking for things that uh, align with whatever their perceived grievances. They have taken an unusual fascination in Columbine and other large-scale uh, horrific attacks. The modern era of active shooter events really began with Columbine. The copycat phenomenon is real. They're looking to those attacks for inspiration, and sometimes it even turns into sort of a, a hero worship. These troubled young men and women dream of unspeakable carnage. Those who've actually attacked, wounded and killed scores of innocents, who should never be forgotten. In the cases we studied, 66 killed, 59 wounded. How can this dangerous phenomenon be stopped or at least slowed? We sought answers from Dylan Cossey, now 21, but who at 14 was arrested for allegedly discussing a plan to attack his high school outside of Philadelphia. Cossey told me there was no specific plot and that he does not believe he would have carried out an attack but he admits to fantasizing about acts of violence against peers who had been taunting him. What really drew me in to that dark path that I was on mm -hmm. was that sense of hopelessness. Right. And you start to associate with people who may discuss those kind of violent acts because they're the only people that at the time you feel that understand you. He began researching Columbine. And when I heard that these kids were bullied and that's why they did what they did, that's when the thought goes, I was bullied too. 
After being arrested, Kathy received years of court-ordered therapy. What would Dylan of today tell the Dylan of seven years ago? I would probably tell that you're stronger than you think you are. You're not alone. There is more support out there for you than you could even think possible. That you can move forward beyond anything that you're going through and move ahead with your life to a better place than you thought you could.